Hello, my friends, possibly foes. This is Randy Ritchie, and it is Jewish, Asian, and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. And this is Jewish, Asian, Pacific Islander wrestlers that you should know. Today, we're going to talk about, and we're going to, I'm going to go ahead and say we're going to fucking honor Matt Bloom and Dakota Kai. Talk about uh, an odd pairing, huh? Miss Dakota is Pacific Islander. Matt Bloom is Jewish. Matt Bloom graduated in 1996 with a degree in sign language following the 1995 NFL draft. He was signed by the San Diego Chargers as an undrafted free agent, but was eventually weighed by the team. This is the part I like. He then became a school teacher, teaching mathematics, English to children with behavioral problems, and deaf children. Huh. After awarding his three most apt students with a trip to a professional wrestling event, Bloom, who has a child that aspired to wrestle professionally, met wrestler and wrestling trainer Killer Kowalski. I didn't know that he was trained by Kowalski. Therefore, that makes me and Matt Bloom probably second cousins. That's outstanding, and it makes a lot of sense. Now, I don't think that WWE knew what to do with Bloom. I don't think they ever totally capitulated on what to do with Matt Bloom. The guy's enormous, and outside of passing him in the hallways and I was doing extra work for WWE... My other interaction with him was when I was at TNA Wrestling. Dutch Mantel taught me it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. And we had a guy on the roster, a hard-working son of a bitch, that did not get a fair start in the industry. I'm talking about Travis Tomko, Tyson Tomko. Tomko was hot-shotted, but Tomko worked hard. And there's absolutely no denying the man's look. So after we had brought in Ricky Banderas, El Macias, I think the name for TNA was uh, Judas Macias. And oh my God, you wouldn't believe the fights that happened there. We thought we got to do something with Tomko. So me and Dutch would get together and talk about putting together the knockouts division we would talk about other parts on the roster and the talent that I noticed that he was working with as creative and the uncrowned head of creative that had to deal with a real punk in, you know, Vince Russo. But anyway, I says, man, have you seen Prince Albert, Matt Bloom at the time, in Japan? I paid attention to it because uh, I was friends with Bison Smith and I was working on something with Noah and uh, working on something with IWA Puerto Rico. But anyway, Bloom at the time, who worked for Noah, but this is why I have my pulse on the Japanese wrestling, was over like a son of a bitch as Giant Bernard. I mean like a son of a bitch. And I said to him, you know, Matt Bloom, he popped and said, that'd be a great partner for Tyson Tomko. Do you know how to get a hold of him? I said, no, but I'll figure it out. And I don't know how, but I know this one and that one and the other one. So I was able to reach Matt. And uh, when I hit him up, I was really surprised, pleasantly, that he was just a guy's guy, man. And now that makes sense to me, because if he is a, 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 a sincere guy working with uh, handicapped kids and deaf people. That explains a lot about the man's integrity, doesn't it, in my opinion? But anyway, I brought up the idea to him, and he said, man, I'm not trying to be big time, but I can't get over the amount of money I'm currently making in Japan. I don't need the bookings. I just don't need them. But I love that idea. I love that idea. You know what? Thank you for calling. If anything changes, I'll get back to you, you know. And then uh, after that, I went and reported to Dutch and blah, 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 blah. Just kept moving. Well, I'll be damned if two months later, Boom hadn't called me and said, I can't get that idea out of my head. I think me and Tomko would be a killer tag team. 
Well, at the time, I saw the writing on the wall, and uh, boy, things had really shifted in so far as the powers at TNA, and it didn't happen. But I was very jacked to see that Bloom finally did it with him and Tomko in Japan, and the fact that it got over. I don't want to hear all the bullshit about Tomko and his drug use. Once again, addiction's a disease, folks. It's not fucking funny. Personal life. Bloom married Farrah Louise on September 23rd, 2005. This is something I like, too. He didn't do this for wrestling. At one point, Bloom had 28 body piercings, and he started body piercings at the age of 14. So that was his decision, not just for some stupid gimmick with WWE. His numerous tattoos represent his eight-year tenure in Japan. Once again, that tells you this is a guy with heart, you know, that he would go ahead and recognize that and also uh, commemorate it. This kind of shit's important to him. And that brings me to today. At many, many companies, but particularly at TNA Wrestling, I was told by many people I cared too much. I don't think I could care too much, you know. You have to be emotionally invested to be great at something. You have to emotionally invest and take those chances in people. Well, as a result of that, Matt Bloom has been referred to as a guy who is perfect for the job. And uh, his thumbprint will be on all the talent that's being developed at NXT since the beginning of his tenure for 20 years. And that was by Sports Illustrated, not just some wrestling rag or a fan. And here's an example and this is Matt Bloom, who took a great and special interest in Finn Balor because of the type of person that Balor was. It has always blown me away how Balor was one of those guys that could keep that smart mark following and adapt to making real money and bless his heart in his 40s, being on all that television, selling all that merchandise, and being compelling AF. But anyway... This is Matt Bloom on Balor. Wrestling is wrestling, so we never wanted Finn Balor to change what he does, said Bloom. We wanted Finn to learn how to work cameras, how to carry a storyline past a tour in Japan. There is a lot of storytelling in what we do with episodic television. That's a big part of the game, and coming here freshens up those skills. Now notice the sincerity there. And number two, Bloom doesn't use the word I in any uh, statement, any part of the statement there. And then finally, we're going to close on Bloom with this so we can also see what I'm talking about and how sincere the son of a bitch really is. When I see Finn Balor, who I knew in Japan for a long time, and think about how hard he has worked, it's hard not to get emotional. Now he is here working on a global platform. Isn't that effing great? Now, Miss Dakota Kai, Miss Crowley, that's her real last name, is of Irish and Samoan descent. Her mother is originally from the Samoan village of La Paix on the island of Upolo. Up Upolu. She has two younger siblings, and her sister, Nyrene, is a mixed martial artist. Her brother, Earl, is a DJ. This is pretty cool, and this means a lot in New Zealand. Trust me, folks, because I know the, uh, my stepfather, Luke Williams. Her grandfather, Pat Crawley, represented New Zealand as a member of the All Blacks in 1949 and 1950, which is rugby, and rugby over there is a religion, folks. And this is what I thought was cool and says a lot about her personality. Crowley is close friends with Shayna Baszler, Maya Yim, and Josiah Duke. And currently she shares a house with Baszler in Florida. Now let me tell you with, with, with my findings of, of Dakota. I, I don't know shit about Insta. I still don't understand how Instagram works, man. I'm an old guy. I'm 58 years old. But anyway... As I'm screwing around on Insta, I come across something, a, a profile of Dakota Kai, and she's a, a, a wrestler, you know. I didn't know she was with NXT or WWE at the time, but I thought, what a look this girl has. And on top of that, she's got an air of, of cuteness about her. I started to follow her, not because I'm a horny old man, but because, like I say, I see something in, in people talent-wise, and if I was going to do that, I would look at her 
more as a talent wise and something that I could teach, you know, girls that I trained. It was probably at the time sky blue. But Dakota has that air of cuteness about her, which just isn't just about the appearance. Of course, her appearance is outstanding, but it's the whole real personality. I don't think she's full of shit on her Insta, and she's not always pimping the next project. The other thing I'd like female wrestlers to notice, or prospective female wrestlers, or India female wrestlers, is I don't think Dakota Kai has the OnlyFans. Does that make sense? Now, here's the big thing I noticed. Once I figured out who she was, and... I want to say she was probably at NXT at the time. I'm not sure when I started following her, when I started following her, that she ended up on the brands. But anyway, I did notice that she was let go. What I noticed when she was let go was the fact of this. She never bitched, complained, or played the victim. And what she was doing more of then was sharing her friend's success and status with WWE at the time. She never cried, whined, piss moan, poor mead, you know? And anyway, here I'm going to share this with you because some people draw you a road map, especially you Indians, if you can get out of your yourself and let go of the ego and wrestling for the morons in the locker room and the 15 likes that you get from the shitty fans that don't buy anything or aren't wearing your t-shirts or anything, this is how you act. That was always in the back of my mind. Should I not be hitting the ground running? Now we're talking about her right after she was released, okay? In terms of doing indie promotions and things like that, I just didn't have an Emmy to rush in after the 30 days was up and be like, boom, boom. Obviously, there were talks that were happening, but I think it worked out a lot better for me that I did it. I focused on streaming and something that was more relaxing, something that I love. It all worked out great. And then I came back into the company refreshed and with a nice outlook on everything that had happened instead of trying to be like, I have to do this, this, and this. Obviously, that's good. But for me personally, I wanted to step back and look at everything, reassess, and make sure that it's not even about the bookings. I wanted to make sure in my own mind, I wasn't going into things because I was like, I have to capitalize this, and after 30 days, I have to do this, this, and this. It was definitely a priority for me to worry about myself and how I was feeling, which is phenomenal, and the rest is history. She wasn't even released for a year, folks, and now she's probably back uh, making more money than she did when she left. So I guess what I'm saying there is Indians or anybody in any industry but I'm talking about the idiots, uh, male or female. Some people like this Dakota Kai draw you a road map, man. Follow their example and don't feed into this stuff, you know, and don't feed into these moron fans that once again don't equate into that much ratings, don't buy anything, don't spend a dime on wrestling, but want to shred everything that they don't agree with just because they want to be cool. All right, guys, once again... Jewish, Asian, and Pacific Island wrestlers, you should know, sponsored by Premier Pro Wrestling. Please be cool, like, and subscribe. And if you want to see some really good-ass wrestling, number one, uh, subscribe to our YouTube while you're here. Go ahead and subscribe to our Rumble. And you've got to, got to, got to check out Premier Pro Wrestling on Patreon. All those are in the description. The links are in the description. Talk to you tomorrow.